Hello, hello, and good evening. This is Brian Chaw, and you are listening to Last Class Right Now. We have something quite special planned for you all tonight. We will be bringing a special guest who you may not have heard of before. Our guest has a grand history being active in the fight for what is right. Before we get started tonight, it is good to know that our guest also has some fun views on how we perceive some parts of our history. So without further ado, it is my honor to introduce you to our guest tonight, Miss Yuri Kochiyama. Round of applause for her tonight. Hello, Brian. Thank you for having me on the show. I am very excited to be here tonight. Glad to have you, Miss Kochiyama. Now, please, would you like to tell us a little about yourself and some of the things that you have done to get your name known? I am not sure many of our listeners have heard your name before. You're an activist, correct? I lived in San Pedro, California, uh, which is, you know, on the uh, west side of California. And it's where many, many Japanese live. Well, the Japanese were mostly all living on the west coast. Uh, Washington, Oregon, California, and parts of Arizona. And that's uh, what they call what the number one war zone. But immediately, the newspaper headlines were, get the Japs out. And uh, people like, who's the guy, the general on the West Coast, the top one? The top general, I can't think of his name. He said, the only good Jap is a dead Jap. And anyway, uh, not just the newspaper headlines, but there were signs all over, get the Japs out, get the Japs out. So were you a teacher on that day Pearl Harbor was bombed? No, no, I had just finished junior college. No, I wasn't uh. teaching, but I was teaching Sunday school. And I had, I, I had been teaching about a year and a half. It was a place where I felt very comfortable. But that day when I went in, I could just feel something was different. And of course, it's because that's all people we were thinking about is. Were you the only Japanese teacher there? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. it was really what you call a white church. Uh, so I took all the kids home as I usually do. Um, they they pack in the car, sit on top of each other, and I take about ten of the kids home. And then when I came home, I was just made it home. I knew my father had come back from the hospital, so I came back early too. What a story, Yuri! Now please tell me a little about yourself as an activist. Well, I have advocated for many causes, um, including black separatism, the anti-war movement, Maoist revolution, reparations for Japanese American internees, and the rights of the unju unjustly imprisoned. I certainly wasn't an activist when I was younger. After Pearl Harbor, I didn't much understand the politics of why these things happened. I moved to Harlem in 1960, and that was really my university without walls. No college in the U.S. could have taught me so pungently and effectively about realities in American life. I met Malcolm X on October 16, 1963, at a course, courthouse in Brooklyn after being arrested protesting for construction jobs. One of the greatest lessons Malcolm taught people was to learn their own history. Know your history, know the world, be proud of who you are. He would say, if you don't know who you are and where you come from, how can you know what direction to go in the future? Now, I have seen a picture where you were holding Malcolm X as he was shot. What was that experience like? As I recall that date, uh, February 21st, 1965, I was sitting in the same booth as Herman Ferguson, which was, I think, about the seventh or eighth row. I was with my 16-year-old son, Billy, and I was taking notes of Brother Benjamin Kareem's message. He had just finished saying, um, just before introducing Malcolm, Malcolm is the kind of man who would die for you. The distraction, a young man yelling, get your hand out of my pocket, took place across from where we were sitting. All eyes were turned in that direction. Malcolm tried to calm the people, saying, cool it brothers, cool it. Then shots rang out from the front. 
Malcolm fell straight backwards, and it was right then all broke loose. Chairs crashing to the floor, people hitting the floor, people chasing the killers. A few more gunshots, and something like a smoke bomb was thrown. It was utter chaos. In her activism journey, Kochiyama also held some opinions that may not be eye to eye with everyday Americans. Kochiyama has been described as a woman of complicated political beliefs and at times contradictory views who managed to combine support for both racial integration and se separation. Dylan Matthews, an American journalist and current correspondent for Vox, has described some of her work as clearly deeply admirable, but cautioned that she sometimes admired truly loathsome figures because she thought they were effective at combating American empire, such as Mao Zedong and Ho Chi Minh. Interviewed in 2003, Kochiyama said, I consider Osama bin Laden as one of the people that I admire. To me, he is in the category of Malcolm X, Che Guevara, Patrice Lumumba, Fidel Castro, and I think Islam for bin Laden. America's greed, aggressiveness, and self-righteous arrogance must be stopped. War and weaponry must be abolished. Definitely some interesting words from Yuri, but when you are passionate about, about following your path, nothing, including other people's opinions about you, matter at that point. Strong-willed and a fiery voice of reason, Yuri Kochiyama has been an impact in our society. As we have seen, even as a youth, Yuri exhibited a certain boldness, asking to write for the community newspaper, becoming the first female student body officer at her high school, and initiating a letter writing campaign to Nisei soldiers. Her actions became more remarkable when we consider the racial and gender constraints prevalent in 1930s America. Perhaps Yuri's parents' liberal child rearing practices or their economic status offset some of the limitations imposed on Nisei women of that time. Perhaps as one of the few Asians in a predominantly white neighborhood, Yuri had the self-confidence that she could accomplish the same things as her white peers. While these might be contributing factors, they fail to fully explain the fearlessness Yuri displayed throughout her life. In her own words, the legacy I would like to leave is that people try to build bridges and not walls. It's relevant, even if them kids caught the shirts and start wearing them. Humbled in the presence of the veterans and not the ones who picked up their guns, but picked up their brethren and sister in. History in the making, I was witnessing, listening. Seen this old Japanese lady with a sticker on her rock and said, Free Mumia, and this was before the trust. The variants were saying it, taking it for granted that we talk about the 60s and never get to talk to anybody who done lived and <laughs> still exists. Better yet, she still resists speaking to a man period of young, dumb, and ignorant kids, I was one of them, stuck around lingering, said that it's a privilege to meet you in person, and she took my hand, said it's good to meet you too, and when I'm out of school, ask me what I'm gonna do, I had to think about it, but truth is, I knew that it was something for the youth, <laughs> truly I'd probably be a teacher if the music didn't make enough to make me wanna gamble on its sustenance, and that's why I'm writing this to tell y'all, from a scholar, when I grow up, I wanna be just like Yuri Koshiyama. Holla, swear to my Kasamas When I grow up, I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama And if she ever hear this, it's an honor Cause when I grow up, I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama Comma, serve the people proper When I grow up, I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama When I grow up, I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama I seen the picture up in Life magazine. You were sitting in front seat from Malcolm's last speech. Saw the first man with the shotgun. Two more came to get the job done. Now who would have thought that it'd be you holding him? I wonder what you felt when his eyes were going dim. And if he never died, would he know that he ex 
Or would he been the leader that we always seem to miss? Now there's no turning back, whatever happens and I miss You remind me that it's more than just a martyr and a myth You just could've said it quits many times ever since And you find there will always be a reason for the fist The last one to hold them could've been somebody else You still be remembered for the people that you help They said it keep trying but never losing hope Revolutionaries die but the revolution don't And it won't and I put that on my mama Cause when I grow up I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama Holla, swear to my Kasamas When I grow up I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama And if she ever hear this it's an honor When I grow up I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama Comma, serve the people proper When I grow up I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama I grow up, I wanna be just like Yuri Kochiyama